Welcome back to That's Debatable. Today's debate, powered by Cisco WebEx, is our final debate for golf staffers. It's all about music, golf music, playing music on the golf course. Is it good or is it bad? Michael Bamberger is our original two seed. He's facing off against Josh Sens, our original three seed. So we've got a good final here. Michael, would you like to go first or defer? I will defer to the gentleman from California. <laughs> all right, Josh. Sean, could you repeat all that? I was just wearing my headset, just listening to some music here. What'd you say? I think you heard me. Oh, oh, music. Yeah, I mean, I, some people would argue that playing music on the course can be loud and disruptive and disrespectful to those around you. I won't dispute that, but that's not going to be the main point I'm going to make. I say that by bringing music to the course, you're essentially saying the pleasure and privilege of playing golf is not enough for me. The beauty of the course is not enough for me. The rhythm and melody in the game is not enough to me. The the pleasure of my company is not enough for me. I need to ramp it up. Those of us who really know golf, who enjoy golf, know that golf is plenty fun on its own. We don't need to gussy it up. Furthermore, we spend our lives bombarded with by technology. The golf course is arrested from that. And we're going to bring in virtual music, technology to bump blast us even further. They don't go together. The Masters knows this well enough. They have the most famous soundtrack in golf. They don't play it while the guys are hitting. Let's face it, music and golf. Golf, already, if you have music in you, which a lot of golfers do, you don't need to bring it from the outside. Be like Fuzzy. Whistle while you play. Jack Nicholas used to say that the tempo he wanted to hear in his head was the song, the tune of George, Georgie Girl. Not a great song, but you get the point. Bring it with yeah. you. You want music on the course, go to the range with your beat solos beforehand, then come to the tee box. I think so, that's what Michael's doing right now. Mr. Bamberger has the rhythm and melody in your game. Sorry, guys. Sorry. What what was that all about? <laughs> you stole my joke. I was about playing. <laughs> what, what, did, what, did Sen, what, what did he do? What did Sen do? Did he defend no music? Yes. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you were from California, brother. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Every single activity known to mankind is improved with music. Uh, let me start by saying that in my youth, and Josh, you're, you may remember the tail end of this, uh, the Van Morrison uh, Greatest Hits collection got everybody in a better mood for, for everything. Um, if you uh, figure skating without music, you don't have a sport. The NBA basketball without music, you don't have a sport. Uh, football, the seventh inning stretch, everything. Baseball would only be half the game it is about baseball. Golf would be incredibly improved with the background of uh, music. I'm surprised, Josh, a man of your sophistication and cultural bearing doesn't see that golf needs to evolve with the times and bring music into the game. Can you imagine Tiger Woods walking from 16 to 17 with earth winds and fire earth wind and fires <laughs> let's groove tonight in his ears i mean he's already facing you know one of the most difficult tee shots in all of golf and now he, and he was trying to rev himself up and he would only rev himself up more with music and by the way it doesn't have to be just soul or just rock it can be classical you could be playing eric sati uh Pide, number one while you know trying to make it for four footer there are so many different types of music that would enhance golf affect our mood improve our play okay. and bring more joy to the game and isn't that okay. what it's all about josh he compared golf to a lot of other sports that have music is that even fair to do well look i love music as well and there's a long history of music being imposed on golf and we have seen what fraught territory it is when that happens think of the gopher shimmying to, to kenny loggins and caddyshack and you just wince i mean kenny g uh, Alice Cooper, bad things happen. There's music already in the game. The greatest musician golfers out there, Neil Young and Willie Nelson, they don't play music on the course. They have the music within them. I'm surprised Michael referred to, to my pedigree. A man whose every pore oozes with respect for tradition is willing to thrust technology and outside interference. For him, the game is not enough. He needs to ramp it up. I don't get it. The greatness of golf alone is enough for me. Michael, you have 30 more seconds. Try and win this debate. You're a little bit of a hole. The outside influences in golf are numerous. I mean, the golf club is an intrusion. The tape on Tiger's hand is intrusion. Spikes on your shoes. It would just be one more element that would add uh, that would add more to the game. I think it would uh, in enrich the game, improve the game, bring more joy to more people. And uh, I don't see why we have to be stuck by our past. I think it's time to evolve, and uh, I think it would be a lot of fun. 
Oh, Michael, you had me going when you're talking about Tiger walking from the 16th to the 17th tee. I really love that. But you didn't mention what could have been the greatest point getter is walk up music. Walk up music on the first tee. I think if you would have had that, you would have moved on in this debate. But for now, we're going to have Josh Sens move on in the final to take on Keith Mitchell. And that's debatable, powered by Cisco Webex. Gentlemen, go listen to some music. Well played, Josh. Then. Well, well done. And uh, I forgot to mention that you know golf, golf already has a dorky enough image, and we want to bring Hootie and the Blowfish into the course to make it cooler. It's just not going to work.